Welcome everyone to another episode of Kiwi Talks. I'm honored to be speaking to my man all the way in Pittsburgh, the KOTD champion, King of the Dot champion, Real Deal. How you doing, brother? You know, what's good with you, fam? Thanks for having me on, man. No worries, man. First, I got to compliment you on your epic beard, bro. I've been trying to do it, but... Uh, oh, it's a it's... work in progress, man. The grades, though, man, uh, you know what I mean? Father time's undefeated, dog. I don't lie. How long did it take you to grow it? You know what? I, I started, I think, right before, Mar like, March, mid-March. Because yeah. that's when we went on, you know what I mean? They called everything, kind of shut everything down. And, uh, yeah, since mid-March. And I just recently started tapering the sides of it because it was getting, like, Amish, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So sure. I started tapering it, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it, though. Yeah. Because I find when I've, I've tried to grow, grow a beard, it just gets real itchy, and I get food in it and shit, and I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah, so, like, it, it started off patchy, um, and then it definitely gets, like, there's definitely weird drawbacks. Like, this is the longest I've ever had it, but I noticed, like, I, me and my son was at a, a theme park the other day and um, doing roller coasters and stuff. Like, I could feel the pull. Like, it's, like, pulls on my face. Like, it's, it's weird, though. <laughs> True. How is um how's everything going there with COVID nineteen? I mean, most of the time I read up on the news, it's always Texas or Florida, but I've never really heard much about Pennsylvania in terms of COVID nineteen and lockdown and all that. Yeah, Florida is like uh, Florida is like the ugly child of the United States, like you know what I mean. But really, I was down Florida, um, and it's. A lot of that is the media, dog. You know what I mean? Like what yeah. they want you to, what they put out there, what they want you to see, images that aren't necessarily realistic. Um, so Pennsylvania, especially where I'm at, is trash right now, dog. Like they got everything shut down. Not everything, because I just said I was at an amusement, but like bars and restaurants are shut down. You can you can go eat in a restaurant. But you can only have three drinks, and they got to be with your meal. It's just, it don't even make sense. You know what I mean? It what? feels like they're draw That's what I mean. It feels like they're drawing this shit up because what happened was, where I'm at, they shut us down, and then they said, "Oh, they're doing good, so we're gonna open them back up with restrictions." They open us back up, and then they tried to blame all the bar patrons for the outbreaks, right? So they said, "There's tracers that." prove that it's people that went to the bars it's like yeah i'm about to believe that dog like so again it, it's it's pretty whack here right now man it's it's trash so you just locked up at home 90 percent of the time can like how often is there a curfew or anything so there's not a curfew um you know what i mean but there's like so uh you can see about there's so like little you can do you know what i'm saying so like I can't shoot to the bar. Like when we went out to the amusement park, um, you gotta have masks on the whole time. The lines are socially distanced. I get it, man. I'm not against people's safety, man, but you know, I, there's, I got questions. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm going to say, bro. Like not yeah. to jump down a rabbit hole, but, um, and it's as simple as this. Anytime that there's a, a higher entity, a higher power, a higher, whatever that is allowed to just take, and you're just supposed to just comply. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. Without even question. I'm not saying I'm not saying that they're wrong or right, but when you have questions, you're looked at as like like you people think you're crazy. But like I said, the fact that they're now like, yeah, we trace the outbreaks down to the bars, and it's like you really did that. Like it's why it's whack though. It's whack here, man. I just I was just looking at some. Melbourne is looking bad then, huh? Yeah, What's yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. So um, I don't know if you know the full story, but basically they didn't, they didn't train their security personnel right at the, the quarantine hotels when people were coming in from the border because they have to um, isolate in a hotel for 14 days. And there were security staff that were basically amateurs. They weren't trained properly. A, co a couple of them were having sex with people uh, with, yeah, in isolation and then going out to bars and stuff and they weren't sanitizing or anything. So that's what's caused the outbreak in um, Melbourne. Jeez, yeah. Uh, All it takes is one idiot, man. One idiot. And it's just. Yeah. And, and, and it, it's a slippery slope, bro, because you see on one, one side, people are putting out stuff like, don't be a selfish asshole, wear your mask. Right. Yeah. And on the other side, it's like, if you know what I mean? Like, here's my stance on it. 
if I'm coming to your establishment, wherever I'm coming, whatever I got to do to follow your guidelines, I'm cool. Like, you know what I mean? You want to put on a mask. I'm going to put on, I'm not going to be standing there. Like the people that stand here and argue about Matt, like get the, f bro, there are people. So we have bars here. Like I said, when they reopened, you had to have three drinks with the meal. There was people that would go in a bar. Imagine this: you go in a bar and you're like, man, I don't think they're following the guidelines. Instead of just leaving, you call a number and snitch on them. So like this COVID like uh, check people come and like a, a couple of bars and stuff have been my homies bars. And they're like, yo, we passed with flying colors just to let you know on Facebook, whoever tried to like tell on us, get a life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, people are doing that. They're just like, Oh, this doesn't look like this looks like more than 25 people. And I'm just like, damn, bro. Like that's a tough life, man. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So how um how are you keeping yourself sane and obviously keeping your pin sharp as well during this yeah, time? Yeah, so um I've been able to get a lot, a lot, a lot. The, the pros and the cons is man, I got a lot to do every day, bro. Um mm. you know, I don't I don't know how familiar with my thing with my dad, so I'm trying to get legal representation for my father. Um and then also I try to figure out stuff for my son to do for his voice impressions. And then I've been working on this album that should be done September 1st. Um, yeah, man. So just, I have a lot of busy stuff to juggle. Um, and like this, this tournament has been great to kind of, like I said, keep the pen sharp is because being the champ, having the chain, man, there, there's restrictions. You can only battle here. You can only battle whatever. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, man. So like you when you're the champ, um, which I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, you, you can't like I can't go do a rooftop battle or um so you know what I mean for like URL like you know not that yeah. they which I get you know but it's been tough on organic and stuff too because they can't come into the states right so it's been a whole mess and you, you know you get you chomp at the bit you want to get back in the ring you watch all these other people and, and people talking about battle and you're like damn man so this has been great for me and like I said working on the record has been great um that's basically yeah man that, that's been what's been able to keep me up you know nice. what i mean keep me on on my toes a little bit is this your third album this will be my actually it's my sixth but my okay. first one taken down uh which is funny because it's it's whack like it's from like i was like 18 you know what i mean yeah yeah Whack. I was like, oh, I can't have this floating around. So really, this is my, I consider it like sixth time I fully put an album together. But this is like the fifth one. Um, yeah, this will be my fifth studio full recorded album. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Because I've always thought that battle rap and actually recording an album are two different art forms. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't, like, they're not exactly the same. Like, I would imagine you wouldn't approach writing a record similar to jumping in the ring no or, and i think that i think that's what also always fed into the belief that battle rappers don't make good music is because i think years ago a lot of battle rappers would approach tracks with the same kind of aggression and and you know not that those tracks don't have a place and not that those tracks ain't cool and everyone ain't trying to hear some some you know rip the mic kind of stuff but uh it it really pigeonhole battle rappers so it is tough man like you know when you're writing a song with a concept um you know and rhythmically and putting everything together and then to hit the switch and just write acapella bars it's definitely a different mindset yeah. um but i always make sure when my full length albums i do you know one or two cuts that like you know are, are battle rap kind of driven you know i'm not gonna act like you know i wash my hands of it the, mi the minute i get on wax you know but uh yeah it's definitely a different space to be in yeah for sure so what's your approach when you when you have a battle coming up like what's your approach do you just sit in a room and write like how do you do your writing do you just so for my writing man like what i'll do is um you know the first thing is i'll type in or i'll write down the person's name and then i'll think of you know, fl name flips. So name flips are like the 101 of battle rap, right? Um, and the easier a person's name is the flip. The you know, not that you want to do all name flips, but it definitely helps you out. Uh, you know, I, I personally, what I know about that person, 
where they're from, anything that can be turned into a punchline. Um, and then a lot of times I'll have like pages of like random ideas that'll come up with. Like I'll be like, I'll watch a movie or something, something will occur to me or something dope. Like, you know what I mean? Like, for example, the other day, someone was talking about the Dunning Kruger effect. I was like, yo, that's a hot, not only is that a hot term, that's kind of hot to say. Dunning Kruger yeah. effect. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I got a list of stuff, bro. And it'll be like, just dope names to like, you know what I'm saying? Like ideas or sayings or phrases. And they're real short. And some of them don't go anywhere. Like, you know what I mean? Some of them, I'm just like, all right, that's shit. I've had this here for however long, but, um, but yeah, I go the name flip route, um, which was been interesting about this tournament, which I, I love doing stuff like this is challenging is because I don't know what people in New Zealand are familiar with. Like, United States is so, and this is not at all to say New Zealand is not diverse, but bro, like Pittsburgh is completely different than LA. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, for sure. For sure. Pittsburgh is on the, so United States obviously has a deserved reputation about being ignorant towards other people's cultures. We are absolutely. Pittsburgh is like the ignorant of it. We're like the Florida of ignorance to other, like we don't know shit like in the States, in, in Pittsburgh, it's black and white, like black people, white people. Yeah. And then if you see, like, there's very small groups of, like, Middle Eastern or Asian, it's very small, whereas, like, L.A. is diverse, you know? So if I bet if you can – bro, like, I probably know more about New Zealand than 98% of Pittsburgh, and I know nothing, right? Yeah. yeah. So I remember – uh, you know, for example, years ago, like, I, you know, my brother loves movies. He put me on to Once Were Warriors. Once Were Warriors is not a popular movie in Pittsburgh at all. Mm. At all. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I, it's weird. Like, it's so popular there, I guess, right? Because I, uh, yeah. I think the movie's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. But, like, here it's it's not – like, if I battled someone here and said it, I – five percent of people might get it might. yeah 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 people might they have not. to be like movie bus right yeah same thing happened when i went to scotland right like train spotting here is more popular than once were warriors but it's not like oh if you didn't see train spotting you're missing life it's more like a cult classic here right so that's always challenging man when i battle and other like you know battle other people's stuff because you want to try not you want to try to be respectful and not do the bottom of the barrel, you know what I'm saying? Um, kind of want to battle Australia and talk about kangaroos and shit. Like, you know what I mean? They're like, all right, here, dude. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. But uh, no, I, that's that's always – I always, like, like that as a, as a challenge to take. And then the, I've been on the flip side, man. Like, I, when I – again, I battled in Scotland. I battled Seoul. And uh, I was – I remember trying to research things about Scotland. And they said Scotland had the shortest flight like you, in the world. You could fly from this place called um, uh, East West Trade or Papa West Trade or whatever. And it's like a 20-minute flight. I forget. Yeah. So I, I had this bar. I was like, wrote it out. Like, I, you, you know, you I wasn't on board very long. Like, blah, 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 blah. And no one in Scotland knew what the fuck I was talking about. Like, bro, nobody knows that. Nobody gives a shit about that. And I was <laughs> like, oh, now, now I'm like, you know what I mean? Now I'm this, like, googly dick, like. I just didn't want to, you know what I mean? But in the yeah. same token, I had a train spot in verse. I'm like, damn, man. Like, so that's always, that's always an interesting part of writing for sure, man. Cause, Cause when you do your research, are you just going on Wikipedia, Googling? Like what, where do you go to get, uh, do your research? So, um, I, I, you know, I Google things, you know what I mean? I try to find like, an easy thing a lot of times like people from that place you know what i mean so if i know someone's from a certain place but like more importantly like um things that are popular there like i said movie references characters yeah i, I usually try to google it um if i don't know myself or i'll try to talk to somebody that's from there you know what i'm saying like yo like if i got a homie i'm like yo you know like what's it like you know because they have more interesting input you know what i mean yeah yeah um, sure. yeah but if i if i don't have anybody honestly like you know google is usually the best friend with it and like i said when you when battling in other countries and in other spaces you want to try to it's easy when you battle in canada because they're just right above us right they know they get 
you know, with a handful of other different Canadian shit, they get everything we get with it, whatever. Um, but yeah, like sports and stuff is completely different. Like, I don't want to say the, I will say the majority, like the majority of the United States don't give a shit about soccer or football, like rugby or right. And that shit overseas, you know what I mean? Is so big. So like trying to, you know what I mean? It, it's a balance, man. Trying to find out without trying to look try hard. And that's what I said, what I ran into in the Scotland thing. Like yeah, on yeah. one, it's like, come on, dude, really train spotting. And on the other hand, it was like, really dude, nobody fucking knows about that. So I was yeah, like, yeah. You know what I mean, you try to find a healthy balance. No, you did pretty well with uh, a lot of the references in the battles I've seen. I mean, I haven't seen the final yet, but um, yeah, you My did mate. pretty well. Yeah, yeah. And the once World yeah, Warriors. I tried, it was, that's why it was interesting because the battle I think I did with, uh, with with sober. He's like, he's like, I'm tired of these Americans pandering. I'm like, damn, I fell into that. Again. <laughs> I love the angle though. It was a great angle by him. But yeah, so like, that's what I mean, man. Trying to just find out stuff that I that I know naturally or that are easily. You know, because when you come up with Google, there, there, there'll be some shit that no one gives a shit about that I know. Like, oh, the flower, national flower of New Zealand. I'm like, all right, I don't think no one gives a shit about nah. that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but then, yeah. like I said, even if I want to reference American culture, right, or not even American culture, but like movies over here, they might not mean shit to you guys over there. And I'm like, damn, you know what I mean? Well, I, so think, like, I think one of America's biggest exports is its culture, so... I think a lot of Kiwis know a lot about American culture. I mean, obviously, we don't know every single little bit, but I would say, yeah, you guys probably know it more than on the on, as of the reverse, right? You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And I mean, that's you, what I mean. So, like, I'm always like, yo, would they get this, or even more so, terminology? You know what I'm saying? So, even though like our movies and our products might come over, like, there's a lot of terms over here um, that we make punchlines out of that I'm like, damn, would they? get that or would they just think i'm just making some shit up you know what i'm saying so so like i i know i did like the mic the, the 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 bar about uh you know last dance right mj last dance and the homie that put together one of the videos with with oh, the, like the yeah yeah Ripek, i think uh, he was yeah. killing it but he initially sent one with like michael jackson and like his last dance i was like no nah, i'm talking about jordan are you familiar with the last dance like, oh yeah yeah you know what i mean yeah, so yeah, yeah. Trying to trying to make sure nothing gets lost in translation, man. Because unfortunately, I think, which is unfo very unfortunate that, and this isn't just for this, but a lot of battles, if people don't get what somebody says, they automatically either assume it's whack or filler, right? Yeah, for and sure. And it's fucking trash because sure. like, it could be the hottest stuff, and just just be like, all right, I didn't get that. Can somebody fill me in? And then somebody fills you in, like, oh, okay, that's heat. But instead of like, he wasn't really saying nothing. It's like, nah, you just didn't get it. Yeah. And I think that's why in so many battles you'll hear like so many bars about like Friday or Boys in the Hood. And it's like these are great movies, right? But it's safe. You know what I mean? It's everybody. Mm. They're safe, safe bars. They're safe. You know what I mean? And that's why I, I, I think about it when I'm writing too. You know what I mean? Like, obviously you don't want to go super duper duper obscure, but. I think that that is a, is a mindset amongst fans that should change. Like if you don't get something, ask somebody, you know what I mean? Just be like, yo, I don't remember seeing that. Or I didn't get, like, I remember years ago when I battled uh, definition and he said something like dying harder than the boy in the striped pajamas or something. And I'd never seen the movie. Right. And then oh, I really? watched it. It took me like four years after that to watch it. Um, and I was like, yo, that was crazy. You know what I mean? But just because I didn't get it at the time, but I, I think that's the thing too, man. Is is you know, people. If if you don't, as a fan, myself included, man, if you don't get something, ask. Like I didn't get a lot of the stuff I heard in the in the in the rounds, right? Like, yeah, I was wondering that. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't get. No, no, not towards me. I got most of it. Well, some of it I didn't get, but it, I would never be like that's whack. I just didn't get it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like I didn't get it, and if somebody tells me, maybe I'm like, "Oh, that's dope." You know what I mean? But because how do you find? I mean, I'd imagine that sometimes you're writing something and you're thinking, "Yeah, man, this is a dope punchline. This is gonna pop off." And then on the night, you you deliver it and it's crickets. And you're like, "Fuck." <laughs> so that I mean, that's definitely has happened before. So there's little <laughs> tricks at a trade and shit you can do. And I'll, I'll tell you one of mine that I think is hilarious, and I adopted it. 
Um, it's very, it's a very douchebag thing to do. But uh, so one thing I've learned, not even in just battle rap, but as a whole, is one of the most insulting, one of the meanest things you could say to somebody, and no, they know that you believe it, is if somebody tells you you're stupid, right? Like, yeah. bro, you're you're real stupid. Like, you could call them anything, right? So why I say that is, if I say something, I'm like, this is crazy, and it's crickets. There's ways you can sell with the expression to the crowd that they're stupid, right? Yeah. And this is going to sound like a real dick thing to do, right? So I say a punchline. Let's say I'm like, you know, like when He-Man beats Skeletor, and there's no reaction. I'm like, Psh. wow. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. there's a crowd, you go, know, oh, okay, maybe he was saying something. And really, you don't <laughs> fucking know what I was saying, but you don't want to be that person that looks dumb, right? Yeah, so yeah. A lot of battlers do it. You know, catch up. Y'all need to, you know, I mean, I think that's what the initial slow it down was meant for, right? Slow it down is actually super demeaning. <laughs> see, it does, but it's it's amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. Slow it down, like oh, yeah. okay, I know what he said now, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I think that's a big thing I, because I think before, you know, what happens a lot of times is people choke. You you, you think there's there's this big climactic and shit, and you just think about it and then you're done. So yeah. I think just having that confidence in material to deliver it. And you know what I mean? And if people were just like, Shh, man, that was crazy. Like, admire your own work, which, again, is very douchebag. But, like, I, I, you know, it's it's better than just saying some super hot shit and just, you know, choking afterwards. So it's it's a way to kind of, you know, help me continue with the material, too. Yeah, yeah. Do you have to psych yourself up for a battle to get into that mind state? Or are you just kind of, is it like a switch? And you're like, no, nah, I got this. No, nah, man, in all the battles I've done in all the years, bro, I still I still get the, the butterflies. I still get nervous. I still wonder the same questions I've told myself for years not to wonder, like, what are they going to say? What, what if this is – I've tried to come up with things to shake it. Um, one of the things I'll do um, – so except in the battle, writing is probably the easiest process memorization is yeah. super annoying super annoying because you like for every one clean performance that you see a battler get through you they probably rehearsed and choked 30 times and wondered is this going to happen when i do it because yeah. a lot of chokes are not they're not under prepared they're not you know your brain just fucking i say it all the time man like i <laughs> When I, I teach, you know, I teach to like, I'll teach like kindergartners and try to tell something to them. And all of a sudden they look at the ceiling and they forgot what the hell you just said. Right. Mm-hmm. Happens to grown adults too, dog. Like, yeah, I mean, you just hit the nail on the head. You say something, there's no reaction. You wonder some for a second. You're like, Oh shit. What's my, so, um, and then, as far as psych myself up, I don't, you know, I, I just go over my shit. I'm still like old fashioned at the time. Like if I'm in an event, You'll see me pacing in circles, going over my shit. I bet people look like I'm an idiot, but I'm like, man, whatever is going to, until I'm at a point where I'm like, dude, there's no more that you can have this down. If you're going to fuck up, you're going to fuck up. Um, I have a system too. Like I'll <laughs> sometimes, man, I'll, I'll, I'll record it on my phone. I'll listen to it. And then I'll like on the day of, I'll listen to it and then I'll record, I'll go, I'll recite it. And then I'll allow myself to text one person from one letter of the alphabet, right? So, like, oh, I'll like, Let's see what's happening. Because you, when you hear your own shit so much, too, bro, it gets annoying. You're like, ah, mm. man, you start to lose faith in it. So you need, like, little breaks, little milestones, man, anything that can just – because anything that you, you do so much of in a row is just monotonous, right? So, so yeah, man, I, I, as far as psych myself, I mean, the after feeling is still – the best, you know what I mean? Like that's the, what you, if you've been to the mountaintop and have experienced that, that is, that is what you strive for. And once you get that, it's tremendous weight. When you became champ, was it like, Oh shit. Like this is amazing. Or was it, did it feel surreal? Or see, um, I don't know if you like how up on the, the, the situation you were. So when I got, offered the chain or, or the, the title match was like June. Um, because a lot of people have been saying like, yo, I think real deals do. I think real deals do. I had, I was, I just wanted with battle rap. There's so many things that aren't tangible 
that I just wanted something tangible. So even if I had battled and lost, I'm still on, I'm still on record as being a number one contender, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So then my father, then the situation happened with my father. So when I went into battle, the battle was like the middle of August. My father was in the, the ICU. You know what I mean? He was, and he was going downhill. So I really, my focus, I like, I definitely wanted to take my mind off that because I was with my father every day and just get in there and battle. But I was, I was honestly content, whether it be me or him, um, for the, for the winning it. And when I won it, I was like, damn, this is cool. Like, this is even more of a, a tangible thing to add. And I was excited. And, um, I think I was more excited defending it. Mm. Only because I think, again, there was so much on my mind winning it that was not battle rap related. And I had my third round was about what was happening with me right now. So it went off really well, and that was great. But I think ultimately my father had passed on the 1st of September. So November was the defense. So even though, I mean, that stuff's still fresh in my mind every day or whatever, now I go, okay, now can I cement a legacy? Can I chase Pat Stay? You know what I mean? Not to battle him, but can I? Because Pat Stay to me, when I look at King of the Dot Champ, I, I see Pat Stay. You know what I mean? He's, he's a tough guy. He wore that like he was a machine. So I look like, can I, can I wear this shit to the point where people want to come take it back? You know what I mean? Like, no, I, I can knock him off the hill. So that, I think November, I felt more, more of that. Yeah. Does it feel like, though, when you won it, that it was kind of, um, you know, honoring your father in a way, though? Like, yo, this is for you sort of thing. Like, dedicating the performance to him? So if i got to be honest with you, not so much the winning it, because my father was not up to speed on rap, hip-hop, or battle rap, right? My father watched, he saw one of my battles, and it was when I was on TV, and, like, if you ever heard, like, the most amateur opinion on battle rap, like, is that, like, 8 Mile? My dad's never even seen 8 Mile. So my dad was like, that was cool when you were, like, talking about, like, his his pants or whatever. I was like, all right, Dad, we don't have to have this. <laughs> so, he's like, so not as much as winning it, but as much as to say, like, look, man, you know, you know what I mean? I was able to go – You've like, you've seen my hard work. And, and I think me and my father share the same thing, right, whereas – if you're a fucking juggler, I don't know anything about juggling, but dude, I support you, bro. Like I'll, I'll buy a ticket to your show. And if you know what I mean, I just want you to do something to beat the monotonous nine to five to, 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 to be the best you. So I think I was very proud that I got through my stuff. And I think he would have been, he was very, he would have been very proud and not so much like, look, I won, I won this for you, but more so like, listen, man, like I, you know, I'm going to be all right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to be mm. all right. So that was probably my, my feeling towards it. Yeah. One thing I've always liked about Americans, man, is your, your work ethic, eh? Hey? Like, you guys have a very, very hard work ethic compared to Kiwis, I find. We're a bit more chilled and laid back in everything that we do. I think that's probably as a result of the influence coming from, like, a lot of the islands, like Samoa and Tonga and stuff. So we kind of have that – we kind of have that middle ground between, you know, the – the work ethic where you just constantly work and never never chilling but they're not super chill like the islands are i'm not sure if you've ever been to like it's probably similar to hawaii i'd, I'd imagine I th honestly man that might be one of the first times in a long time i heard americans described as like super hard working like <laughs> well it's probably compared to us i mean like i've got an Amer uh, indian partner and i know indians and chinese people like their work ethic is insane you know Mm. They're, they're they're really hardworking, but um, it's 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 fascinating stuff. I mean, because a lot of the media we get here of America is the more extreme stuff. I mean, every time, of course. yeah, yeah, of course. So like, I've only I've only been to Seattle, but I found that when when I went there, I was like, that was a cool space. Yeah, but like, it was completely different from how america is portrayed you and, know and that's and, and so and seattle is completely different from pittsburgh seattle though but the birth of grunge music dog nirvana pearl jam all that is seattle yeah um i think hendrix was from seattle too so 
Pittsburgh actually is cool that you bring up the hard work and stuff like Pittsburgh is what we're that's what we're known for blue collar. So uh, you ever heard of the Steelers? Yeah. Our football team, our American football team. So yeah, yeah. that's based off we were like the biggest steel supplier in the world and like whatever. And that's nineteen, whatever. And uh that's what we were known for. Steel workers, blue collar, hard working, um, drinking, you know what I mean? You, you you go to work, you come home and drink. You know what I mean? So I think, but I think, like I said, with the United States being so diverse, we look at other cities in our own country and like different. Like I remember my father's, I took him out LA and he kept saying to me before, he's like, everyone in LA, are they like, are they going to be like, like I said, dad, you're talking about like Valley girls, dad. Like, what are you talking about? Like, no, like no one I'm going to be around is going to be like that. Dad. Like, where did you hear? Like in his, he's thinking like the beach boys and shit, like his era. And I'm like, dad, like, so it's, I mean, I definitely think that there are like a lot of like hardworking Americans and whatnot, you know, and there's a lot that aren't as much. And that's definitely, you know, that's definitely a, a thing we have in our, our country is just so diverse, man. But I know Pittsburgh is, is that's a notorious kind of thing for cities like Pittsburgh, really like Cleveland, you know, are supposed to be like hard blue, like that whole Midwest, like yeah, yeah, blue for color. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, but of course you guys are always going to get, and the funny reverse is we always get like the beautiful parts of where you guys are from. So they yeah, live in this yeah. epic New Zealand and then you'll see like a hundred Americans like comment under, Oh my God, take me there. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so true. I remember when I went to Seattle, I kept getting asked about my accent. And um, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm from New Zealand. And they'll be like, oh, Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings. I'm like, yeah, yeah. they will be always um, referencing Lord of the Rings. I'm like, oh, yeah, do you know Peter Jackson? I'm like, well, no, we're not boys or anything. Like, <laughs> Buddy, bro. No, I, you know what I get, bro? I'll be honest with you. When I go, over, and I've, I've said this for the longest, it's like, um, is people will always ask me about fucking Trump. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was hesitant to actually ask you because I'm like, ah, uh, it's just, I'm over it at oh, this point. So, of all the things, like, in America you can ask me about, first of all, I don't know what screams, like, politician about me, like, and I'll just be like, you know, when I'm over it, I'm like, no, nah, I don't fuck with dude, like, I, you know, I, I think he's a clown, personally, but I don't, you know, I don't, I don't really follow politics, and you would usually think that's the end of it. Yeah. But people will be like, what do you think about how he like? I'm like, man, this is like, I literally, there was a bartender in Scotland, man. I, I think you'll appreciate this story. I keep bringing up Scotland and shit. Like, by the way, I was in Scotland. Uh, <laughs> so we're sitting in a bar though. No, seriously. And I'm like, you know, can I get a beer? And she comes, Oh, you're an accent American. Blah, blah, blah. And she goes, you know, how do you feel about Trump? And I'm just like, you know what? I, you know, be honest. Uh, I, I don't vote. Um, I've not really liked any of these candidates in, in, a, in a minute. You know, I don't care for Hillary, Biden, I, but Trump. At the time, it was like Trump, and I said, yeah, a dude's a clown, I don't care for So she's, well, this is right after he got elected. This is probably 20, late 2016, 2017. She's like, um, yeah, I rem like, I can't believe he's president of your country. I was like, yeah, it's crazy. Can I get a beer? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> she keeps plugging away at it. Like, I mean, the, He's like a pervert and everything. I'm like, yeah, that's what they say. I'll take a tall. Like if, you know, so finally she's like, <laughs> I had enough, bro. She's like, you know, I was so mad when he got elected over here. I called off work and we protested. I said, hold on, let me get this straight. So someone got elected. I said, I'm not trying to be ignorant. I don't know who runs Scotland, let alone what runs Scotland. Can you imagine if I called my boss and said, I, I'm not coming in today. I don't approve of whoever just got elected in Scotland. I'm protesting in the yeah. United States. Yeah. I said, your boss was all right with that. I said, that's wild. That's wild to me. You know what I mean? Like it was, maybe I'm missing some large picture, but you know, I, cause I, again, my personal thoughts is dude's a clown. Um, and I don't go by what the media says. I go literally go by his personal Twitter. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, can he not shoot himself in the foot every single day? It's a shit show. But, like, I'm, I'm not here to, to sit here and, you know what I mean, like, 
yeah, talk yeah. about drunk with you. Like I'm, you know what I mean? Tell me some cool bars to go to or something. I don't fucking want to talk about that. Every yeah. every app I open up on my phone every day is, you know, I was like, Jesus Christ. So um that sadly is predominantly what I what people ask me the most over in other countries. Like, oh. And right, obviously well, like, when like you, you come said, yeah, yeah. When you come to New Zealand, whenever that happens, I'll we'll make sure that we don't ask you shit about Trump. Well, hopefully Trump's not in office by then. It'll be yeah, Biden. Oh, wow, who knows? Who who knows? I don't well, even it, know. Yeah, it's a collective shit show. Like I said, man, it, it's it. To be honest, it's funny because when he first started to run, I guess Trump, I just thought it was funny. I'm like, yeah. And I was then it saying, was, yeah. He just beat the Republican dude. I'm like the fuck did this because i'm like he was on wrestling getting stunned and shit like <laughs> and then he was like and i'm like damn and dude south park uh, the south park perfectly bro when they did the the hillary versus trump the giant douche versus the turd sandwich and they're just like and hillary couldn't get out of her own way bro it was that's i think what america felt like at the time like Damn, if Hillary just had any redeemable qualities. But again, I don't even delve. You know, I, I, I get up and I, I make money here in this country and I work hard and I've done well. Um, obviously, I'm outspoken about things I see that, you know, the George Floyd situation was absolutely appalling and disgusting. Yeah, and just for sure. And I'm doing things doesn't mean that it's, it's out of my place to come out and say, hold the fucking fort. What you did to that fucking man was wrong. You know what I'm saying? So I don't wash my, I don't punch just pile up myself of everything that's, you know, but jumping down a rabbit hole with, with media sources that are dishonest and I'm, I'm cool on that, man. I, I believe my, you know, I got an expiration date on this earth. You know what I mean? I'd rather spend the time doing something better than that. Do you get into heated wars with people on Twitter though? I, I, I've caught myself not really... Bro, one of the one of the, the the most fucking beautiful things I've ever decided to do is just like literally apply, not just say, but apply the term apples and oranges sometimes. All right, bro, apples and oranges. I have caught myself once in a blue. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, like I'll put an opinion out there, and then like like Facebook, it happens to me a lot too, where. I put my opinion on something, and it's not even really that strong. Like, I don't even jump out the window and say nothing crazy, right? I, uh, but I'll put an opinion out there, and there'll be comments, comment, and I, I don't have the time, bro. Have you seen some of, these, some of the time people invest? Like, Talib yeah. Kweli, right? Bro, he, Talib, you're Talib Kweli. Like, you are a former platinum artist, and my man doesn't miss a beat. Now, he's off Twitter now. They, they threw him off Twitter. But he would respond to everything, like, full response. I'm like, I can't do it. A couple days ago, I shared my thoughts with him. So Snoop said uh, he, he would put KRS in his top ten over Eminem. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I, I wouldn't do that. I, I couldn't do that. Me yeah, yeah, yeah. I already know, like, I'm not saying I'm a hip-hop historian or whatever. But me personally, I would not. Um, I, I, you know, KRS, obviously, I'm – you know, he has his, his body of work and his influence. He's a trailblazer, yada, 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 yada. But I think nowadays it's one of the cool things has become is weirdly to, like, disrespect Eminem's legacy. I'm not, like, the most diehard Eminem dude. You know what I mean? I've, I've never been, like, standing up. But it comes to a point where you're like, bro, like, like I said, it's become cool to be like, well, he sucked after his second album. And I'm like, that's pretty strong. You know what I mean? Like, to say his first two records are his best, okay. But... So anyway, not to go too far down that, but bro, I was getting all these responses, like verified Twitters, like you're wrong. Da, 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 da. And I was like a couple of, I was trying to have like healthy debates. Like, okay, well tell me why I'm wrong. You know, cause one dude's like read a fucking book. And I'm like, all right, well let's start with what book would I read that would change my <laughs> view? What? Now you're just like, if you're just here to trade weak ass jabs, bro, I don't got the time. And I actually had like a dialogue with him or whatever, you know, and I, I ended up, man, it might sound soft, but like 20 tweets in, I was like, I'm just deleting it, bro. I was like, I just don't, you know what I mean? I'm like, I got so much shit going on that I want to push and whatever. 
I don't want this shit to not I definitely didn't have viral potential, but I was like, I don't want this shit to like be responding to this shit every day. And I don't give a f- like at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck where you got KRS one. I don't, I do not. I never will have him above Eminem in my top. I'm not even saying if I sat and thought about it, what my top 10 is, but I would, if Eminem makes my top hundred, KRS is 101. Then he's not making it above Eminem. <laughs> Regardless, at the end of the day, who gives a fuck? Um, but to, to get back to your question, I try. Um, obviously, COVID is obviously anytime you put your stance out on COVID, there's 100 people that know this from this. Um, again, I put a status out there on Facebook like a week or so ago, and all I said is, and there's something up with this, this COVID situation, man. I just got some questions. That's all I put. Yeah. And man, like, there was people were hitting me with that SpongeBob meme, like, oh, I got some. I'm like, yo, don't come at me like that. It's not necessary. You know what I mean? Like, don't do it. Like, I mean, a lot of people were supportive, of course, as well, or supportive over the top. But they'd be like, yeah, I'm, all this is fake. And I'm like, oh, well, I didn't say all that. Like, you know what I mean? I think the perception is the minute they come on, it's like, I agree with all that. And I'm like, no, I didn't say that. Like, so. I, bro, I really try to to stay. I really try not even to argue with people about really anything anymore, dog. Because I don't have the time, and it's exhausting. I think some people credit themselves with the more responses, like equals a win. And I'm just like, well, you're gonna beat me every time, man. Because I got shit to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, the reason why I ask is because um, I've gone to debates on social media before and I find it, it, it fucks with my mental health. I'm like, why the fuck am I? Because it's all negativi- negativity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, on the head, bro. The KRS shit, I'm literally, I'm on a walk around the neighborhood and shit because there's not a lot you can do, right? You want to try to get some physical exercise. I'm walking around the neighborhood. And I'm like, <laughs> wait and see what, like, Silly me thinking the expectation is the other person is going to be like, dude, you're right. And I didn't even think about that. Of course not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Neither was I. So instead, like, I wasted, I'm, I'm here I am. And I'm just like, God damn. And so you hit the nail on the head, bro. Because I was, because all these accounts, right, were coming at me, right? Blue checks and everything. Like it wasn't like egghead guy, ten followers. It was like verified, and then so of course their followers are responding to them like shitting on me, and I'm just like, yo, this is whack. Oh yeah, man, I I, I made it. I'm like, look, I'm gonna delete this tweet. I still feel how I feel. You ain't gonna move me on the issue, but I I, I gotta yeah for my own purposes. I gotta step back. But you can check yourself when you. When you see yourself going down that road, that's that's the main thing. It's it, yeah, but it's it's an it's an acquired skill, bro. It's an acquired skill that I you know I got it. You know, if I give myself kudos for something, it's, it's got to be for that because there's still a lot of grown people. There's a lot of people that don't possess the skill to not just argue. You know what I mean? And fight tooth and nail about shit. So it, it's taken me a while because. I'm naturally a very argumentative person. You know what I mean? Like, I love to sit and debate sports with people. Nah, that dude, he dropped 20 a game that year. Nah, but, but once it's like people are up in their fields or insulting or like, you know what I mean? It, it get, like I said, or like you're online and I don't even know you and you're just on my, like, you know what I mean? You're making general assumptions. And I think a funny thing is, bro, one of the worst overutilized things nowadays in discussions are poor analogies, right? So you're like, I think uh, New Zealand has better scenery than the United States. And I'm like, dude, that's like saying it's like 99% of the time. It's not like saying that at all. Yeah. It's like saying Star Wars is better than the Star Trek. It's like, nah, dude, they have nothing to do with each other. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and people love to use them all the time. So you're like, I got questions about COVID. Dude, that's like saying, mm, I'm already skeptical about where you're going with this, and it's not yep. like saying that, bro. And it, people just utilize unfair shit to their advantage, bro. It, it's, it can be very stressful, man, for sure. Yeah, for sure, man. Have you ever thought, because I would think the natural progression from battle rapping would be acting. 
because you have to memorize stuff you know you you're on stage you're you're pretty much you know putting it out there i suppose like an act in some ways mm. but um because a lot of battle rappers that i talk to here they're like the nicest dudes out like nicest dudes out and like but you see them on stage and they're they're hardcore man you think they'd have an anger problem or something but but you know what I mean? Like, have you ever thought about maybe getting into the, the acting game? So I never did. Um, I, I don't know, man, because I guess with that thing, you got to totally, like, immerse yourself in a character. Um, where you going, bud? Oh, my, my son was going to do some go Do some impressions real quick, man. Bust a couple out. All right, hold up. My son does impressions. I'll let you hear his impressions yet. I'm going to throw him on oh. the video. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, um, no, 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 man. With with me, you know what I thought of doing is stand up, but then the oh, fear, true. the fear of not like folding is a little too much for me, dog. Like, there's two things in life I, I can't watch: uh, horrific injuries. Yeah. Now your, your your boy will be like, "Yo, check this dude's leg go through his spine." I'm like, "No, nah, I'm good." <laughs> right. Or like a comedian bomb, like when he's just stinking to join up and you're just like, oh, get him out of there. You know what I'm saying? So I think uh, acting, obviously, you don't got to worry about that as much. <laughs> but like, I don't know, man, I, I think being trying to be immersed in a character too, like, because I think battle rap is, is very... I don't know if it's a character as much as there's just like aggression, humor. There's only like three different things you can go into, right? Believability, humor, and aggression. Whereas like actors, you got Brad Pitt playing an old man and a baby in the same movie. Like that shit is. <laughs> and they said people like Daniel Day, they get like damn near unhealthy wrapped up in characters. I don't, I don't think. Method acting, yeah. Yeah, I don't think battlers possess that kind of. Uh, that kind of that kind of talent or anything like that, but stand up is always something I thought would be incredibly rewarding. But like I said, I think my fear of not being funny, and and I don't know, but I guess comedians are able to develop tactics to win crowds over when jokes aren't hitting. Kind of like you said with the lines before, the comedian or the battle rappers I've seen jump into stand up, I've never been too wildly impressed. You yeah, know what I mean, because what's not, the you think, but I, I think, because I think that's always been one of the assumptions. Like, oh, he's funny in battle rap. He'd probably be great at stand up. It's like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Because do you want to do battle rap till the day you die? Or are you be some no. point where you're like, ah, oh, no, nah, I think I'm time, time to hang up the mic? With me, I like, my music has always been my, my first thing. But I'm also part of the an older crap of crop of battlers where uh, you did music and battle rap was just to promote it. Yeah. yeah. So you go and they're like, yo, that was dope. And you're like, yo, check my music, whatever the case. Right. So I think as battle rap's popularity went up, uh, I think that the, the need to do both went down. So there's battlers nowadays that don't even make music. It's crazy to me. I, I don't know how you do it. Um, but it's like they've just mastered the art of the four bar punchline or the joke telling in rhyme form. And so for me, I still do it. I still get a rush off it. Um, you know, I still like the competition. I still like to feel like at something like battle rap, I'm still an elite person in the world, which is always great. You know, and it's taken me a long time to realize. I don't know when the when the time. I think the when I see that the demand isn't there, or I'm not making the gains that I want to, or being approached with the offers, you know what I mean, that I'd like to. Mm. Obviously, it's this whole COVID situation, but every year I think that's how I I gauge it. You know what I mean? Am I still you know, is my income from it still going up? Am I still going to see new places and have new experiences? And am I still broadening my fan base and expanding my brand? You know, if it ever comes the day that I'm the fucking like the movie, the wrestler and shit, you know what I mean? I'm 
in a fucking high school gym, you know what I mean? Like yeah, or yeah. When wrestling Coco Beware, then maybe <laughs> and then maybe it's about it's about that time, you know what I mean? Do you think you'll always stay in Pittsburgh though? I love Pittsburgh, man, and I, it's not a very popular thing to say about living in Pittsburgh when you're in Pittsburgh. So it's cool to say I love Pittsburgh, like the Steelers, and the, but like people immediately want to leave. Um, I think so, man. I, I I like Pittsburgh a lot, bro. Like Pittsburgh, has, I mean, it has its pros and cons, just like everywhere. Um, so you know, we get we get the the winters, the harsh winters, and the humid ass summers, a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't actually, I don't actually know that much about Pittsburgh. I mean, all the, I know all the cliche stuff, you know, about LA and New York and. So what? What's that? What do you know about Pittsburgh? Ah, uh, well, this is going to sound bad, but like I've heard, it, there's a lot of crime there. <laughs> there's some. Yeah. You might be Philly though too. Yeah, I've heard Philly, Philly and Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. So Pennsylvania is our state, right? Yeah, yeah. Philly's on one side, Pittsburgh the other. Both of us have a shit ton of crime. We got work to do for sure. Um, so like Pittsburgh is like Mac Miller is from Pittsburgh. Wiz Khalifa. Yeah. You collaborated uh, with Wiz, haven't you? You did, a, you did a track with Wiz Khalifa, didn't you? No, no. We used to do shows. I did a couple shows with him coming up in like 07, 08. But yeah, no, I never did track with him or anything. Yeah. I, I actually knew Mac a bit more than I knew Wiz. Um, this park, man, has a lot of, like, historical, cool little gems and shit. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people that are pretty dope. Like, Kurt Angles from Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, he is too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Fucking Bruno San Martino. But that's old, old, old school wrestling. We got, like, you know what I mean? Heinz Ketchup. I'm schooling you, dog. I'm telling oh, you, man. Oh, bruh. Culturing just... you with Pittsburgh, dog. Yeah, First man. Big Mac ever was made in Pittsburgh, dog. We're... We're not a big city, man, but we're important. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Bro, first Big Mac. Oh, oh man. man. That's me. Um, so in terms of in terms of what happened with uh, New Zealand, did so were you approached to, to come on the line em up uh, tournament or did you uh, just see it and were like, yo, I'm keen, I'm game? So I actually, you know what's cool, man, is, is – um, I don't even know how to say is D D law D law one or am I <laughs> so D law actually reached out to me, which was cool shit. And he was like, yo man, I, you know, I'm guessing you probably wouldn't want to take part in this. And I'm like, why not? Fuck it. You know what I mean? Which I can get like, you know what I mean? It's probably like, I don't think dude's going to be one, you know, but I feel like, you know, doing shit like, like this keeps the hunger alive, you know what I'm saying? And, and allows me to see the kind of talent you guys got down there. And especially like shit, man, like I know that New Zealand is not exactly the mecca of hip hop, right? But fucking neither was Pittsburgh, dog, you know what I'm saying? And I had to try to get some kind of exposure, some kind of love, I had to claw and fight. I wasn't, you know, there's West Coast, East Coast. Pittsburgh is not a coast at all. Philly's East. But Pittsburgh is so far away on the state of Philly, we're not even northwest. We're like northeastern or some shit. I'm saying so we didn't have. Uh, so it, it was it was cool to be able to jump in this man and see what you guys are doing down there and, and to test the pen out, man. You guys definitely got some spitters down here, man. I, I'd love to see some opportunities pop up, man, for for a lot of guys down here, man. Because when I first came into it, like Australia, for example, had a dope scene. And they had some good spitters, you know what I'm saying? They had like, uh, you know, 60 and Anecdote and all those guys. Um, but I, I, like I said, I'm not too familiar with New Zealand's hip hop history. Um, so well, it's what I could spit down here, man, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's most of the, the, the dope spitters or the real dope artists within the New Zealand hip hop scene are Polynesian dudes. Like, like Polynesians love hip hop, man. Like, they are the. Word. They are the predominant base of hip hop in the country. Um, uh, so, like, you know, the Samoans, Tongans, Fijians, like, they love hip hop. They love hip hop. And that's not to say, like, the, the Europeans and Indians and stuff don't love it either, but they are the predominant base. And, and the, um, the indigenous of the, the country, which is the Maori, um, obviously, they love it too. And there's right. a lot of, yeah, yeah. So, they, they are the base. I mean, a lot of the dudes that battle, 
they are Polynesian. Uh, there are a couple, obviously, white dudes and stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, no, we, we do have a, a strong hip-hop base, but it's just on a much, much smaller scale because there's only 5 million people here. Yeah. But, I mean, that, to honestly, man, that once you get, even if you look at, you know, how some of these movements have come about in battle rap, like Jersey, right? All it takes is one to kind of break in and then, can, you know, keep that door open for the other couple. And then all of a sudden you got a night. And I think that's what happened with Australia. Right. So like justice was doing good in scribble jam and then 360 and anecdote. And then all of a sudden that, you know, it opened the door for a lot of Aussie battlers. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm drawing blanks right now, but like I said, 60 anecdote Defron was, you know, has been around for a long time as well. And then uh, there's, like, oh, there's a cat. I know I'm forgetting that that's really, but there's a lot of, ah, who am I forgetting down there? That's actually super dope too. Shit. I, I can't think of his name. Oh, and then the kid cursor came out he was doing well. And then 360 was on like rolling stone and shit. Like that was crazy. I'd like to see the Aussie scene, like make a make, definitely make a comeback, man. Oh, and they had um, more recently, they had done Dundee, and uh, Greeley was it Greeley? They're dope and Vega, obviously. Like, yeah, so Vega, yeah. I'd love this. Like I said, man, I thought it was so cool at the prime when the world domination events would have people from every, you know what I mean? I think right now, COVID obviously plays a huge part. There's not a lot of variety in battle rap, you know what I mean? If Unless you're on that caffeine thing and you're watching what Smack got going on, and they got some great spitters and whatever, but. Um, it was it was good to have that competition and that variety. So hopefully, as COVID dies down, man, some opportunities are put out there for you know what I mean. Because I think that's a cool thing. Do you think Organic would ever approach people from Australasia? <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think his biggest thing is. Um, I think perhaps you there. I think his biggest thing is making the investment worth it. Right. So, yeah, for sure unfortunately a lot of times it's not just enough to be dope to get flown everywhere or brought somewhere so an artist like 360 although again is very dope anyway makes a lot more sense than to bring like damascus right where damascus is dope to me i think he was he's very good um so i wish that there was just some kind of way like i i think maybe you know, some of them bringing, like, getting themselves over, you know what I'm saying, or something. But, I, you know what I mean, I think that's a that's a thing to think about, too. Um, if some of the, the names are going to get themselves over and then put on a show when they get there. So, like I said, um, I want to say it was – I'm almost positive it was, it was Dundee. Um, he killed it at World Dumb, man. He bodied – a Canadian up there, like smoking 3-0. And I think that's the biggest thing, man, is just taking advantage of your opportunities when you get there. But it, like I said, man, it, me being from Pittsburgh is not even nearly as tough as like coming from New Zealand to try to make it on a grander stage, you know what I mean, battle rapping. I think, um, I think if a battle rapper here was given the opportunity, I actually think a lot of the – a lot of the people within the scene or the community, because we kind of have like a very tight community here in Battle Rap. Mm-hmm. I think they'd probably pay for his flight or they'd support him in, in some way, shape or form. So, um, I mean, I, I think I, was it Oxy Moran? I think that when he battled mm-hmm. Diz, I think uh, he didn't even get paid for that, did he? He just, I think King of the Dots so just paid for his flights. Something like that. But I, from what I gather... Uh, he's a pretty big star over in Russia, right? Yeah, like, he's the, massive. The, yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. So I think he gets paid anyway. Cause like, you know what I mean? Um, his battle view wise, we're doing 15 million. I mean, I, I feel like that's actually him and Diz is like a low viewed battle for him, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's another thing too, man. Like if if there was someone from New Zealand with that kind of star power – that changes the whole ball game. But ideally, you know, what you would love is for chances to be given to dope um, people, you know what I mean? Sober, Bills, Damascus, like 
uh, people that, frankly, I think deserve it on talent level. You know what I mean? So I think that I would hope if world domination were to come back again, this COVID thing throws a whole damn wrench in it because I love the idea of it. Um, it would be great to see those guys because I know like Toomey came from South Africa. Um, I know the UK – their hip hop scene again, kind of like I, like I know Australia took a hit with their battle rap scene with yeah. that whole debacle with that decoy situation, um, which was crazy. So the UK then obviously don't flop, kind of fizzled out, and you know they're coming back. And I like her. I've always been a fan of her. I know you know I don't I don't know what other people say about him, but I, he's always done right by me. I know Premier Shoddy, they got their thing going on. So I don't know if that's an option too. So maybe, you know, a New Zealand go, a New Zealander goes and puts on up there, and then one goes on and puts over in this. You know what I mean? Like, and just, I think my advice would be, whoever does it, uh, you know, if, if there's a couple of them to do it, they just stay like a unite. Like, like I said, like the people from Jersey did here. You know, Arsenal, Shotgun, Shug, and and those cats. They always rep Jersey to the fullest, no matter what, and they open the door for a lot of people behind. Them. Again. Jersey, New Zealand, it's it's completely, you know what I mean. But you get the gist of it, you know. Yeah, for sure. I saw um I saw on your YouTube page there was I think it was quite a while now now where you were t you you kind of went on a bit of a rant about how battle rappers are pussies. Um, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was hilarious to watch uh, because I I know I I can imagine that with battle rappers there's the ego that that you've got to contend with with a lot of different people. And I'd imagine that trying to organize a battle with some people, there's so much politics involved and so much bullshit behind the scenes that you have to contend with. So with the, I can't remember what rant this was exactly. I'm not saying I didn't say it because I guarantee I fucking said it, but I, what was it? What was the basis of it? Uh, it was after one of your battles. Um, was it with um, Snow? I think it was. And you, you just went on. It was, it was, it was five years ago. It was five years oh, ago. Oh, I know what you're talking about. And it you're like, a, and a... you're like, these rappers are pussies. They're actual pussies. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, this is hilarious. I think, I, I think I had battled. It was about Mike P. I think, right? It was the Mike. Was it the Mike P. thing where I kind of, I was drunk and I like went off on some interview. Well, was it? What, yeah, you were outside. You were wearing a white shirt. Um, and you're just standing there. I don't know if it was your backyard or something. And you're just standing there, and you're just oh, going okay, off. no, that's a different one. I was gonna say okay, okay, I, I know, I know what you mean. All right, so yeah, bro. So, so with the thing with that is, um, battle rap is weird in the in the sense that you can't just be dope and be like, all right, this dude. Like, it's almost like they want the wrestling thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, they want mm. wrestling like drama. And I just, that's one thing I don't excel at doing, bro. I'm just, I'd rather be like, yo, I think this dude's dope. I think we make a dope battle. My only thing is I get pissed when someone tries to talk beneath, like I'm beneath them, right? That's when I'm like, all right, now, like, now I'm going to like, I'm pissed. Like, you know, some pussy, head, let's set it up. And so many battle rappers, man, they just have such a funny style way. Don't get me wrong. I completely get every battle rapper not taking every battle. I completely get it. I understand brand protection. Although myself, I don't do it phenomenally well. But yeah, man, some of these battlers, bro, like it's, it's fucking odd, man. They, the way they operate, man, it's like they have no shut off switch for their, their battle rap persona. And then who they are at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, I think at that time I would, yeah, I, I I couldn't get a URL. So with URL, I did so well my first two battles, I couldn't get another battle. Like, no one would battle me. It's a compliment in a way. Yeah, but I was trying to eat. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so my first battle was B-Magic, and it was a great battle. And literally the people at, at, at URL were like, bro, I, I cannot – we can't get you another battle. Like, people are not trying to battle you. They're like, nah – and uh, they're like, I, uh, nah, whatever. And then they'd find any excuse. And I'd be like, yo, I'll battle this dude. 
And they just like, you know, I would see them call out a hundred people a day and I'd be like, y'all battle you. And they wouldn't respond, but I know they saw it. So I think this is right around that time. And so I finally got to battle snow, which I didn't really want to battle snow at the time. And that's no knock on him, but like, I don't, you know, snow, like B magic was here on the main stage. I got to battle snow. So I said, fuck, I battle snow. I did really good against snow. And I couldn't get another battle after that, bro. I could not get a battle. So finally, I want to say like three years after snow, and this is after watching people get URL battles every two months, choking mm. and then still getting battles choked. And I'm like, damn, what did I do wrong? So again, I battled Reaper. I wasn't crazy about battling Reaper. Um, I did good. You know what I'm saying? But after that, I was like, I, was like, I can't sit on my hands and just keep waiting for them to set some up. I still have a great relationship with the people that smack and URL. I'm not saying I, you know, I, I would never come back or anything like that. If, I, I, I've had talks with them where they were like, look, man, the, one of the biggest problems is that you're white, but you're not corny white. You know what I mean? Like you're not, what you're, you're, you're re, you know, it, it's weird. Like you're respected. You know what I'm saying? So they can't, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, and plus they were like, I think there's a fear. Cause there was, there was a thing like, Oh, he does angles, right? So I think one of the ideas is like he'll find out some shit and he'll try to ruin it. It's like, nah, dog, that's not really what I do. That's not my game. You know what I mean? Like, I'll find an approach, you know, but I'm not gonna find out like who gave you AIDS in high school. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Like, I'm 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 gonna battle you and I'm gonna obviously try to find something a little different, but it ain't that crazy. Cause I had a couple battles that had some unique angles. And from then there, they're like, he'd be doing that angle shit. And it's like, dog, it ain't even like that. Like, and again, it's, it's the whole battle rappers want to be safe kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of battlers are good, but they're safe. Shotgun Suge is good. He's very safe. You know what you're going to get with shotgun. Suge. He's going to, he's going to be pres menacing over you pocket tap you and rap safe. Um, even someone like Arsenal, who's dude, like he's disrespectful. I mean, he's not gonna look up shit about you. You know what I mean? He might say, "Tell your dead mom to blow this dude" or whatever. But he's not gonna. You know what I'm saying? It's not gonna be anything like I didn't even know that. That's crazy. That's risky. Like, whereas like I think T Top is a risky battler. You know, because he finds shit out. Not that he's like investigating, but. He'll find somebody, you know, he's good with the angles too. So I think that's what happened to me. And I think I was in a space where I was getting frustrated. You know what I mean? Like, yo, you motherfuckers are pussies. Like, this is weird as hell. <laughs> Needless to say, nothing come of that call out either. <laughs> so Yeah, I was just wondering what the background was be behind that. Because, yeah, I'd, I'd imagine man, it. I think it I was just like, yeah, man. I was like, what the fuck do I got to do here, man? Like, you know what I mean? I had, you know, at the time, I did the B Magic one is like a Hall of Fame battle, was battle of the night, performance of the night. I battle Snow, that's performance of the night. And like I said, I'm like, I'm watching people choke away opportunities. Give me this platform. You know what I mean? Like, I promise you it's in good hands. But, um I'm good where I'm at. You know what I mean? And like I said, I have no, they were everything, but they were straight with me, the URL staff. Um, and that was a conversation that we had and I understood it. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is there anyone you haven't battled that you want to battle? People ask me that a lot. Like as far as like want to battle, I could probably sit and think of some names, but I don't, it's weird. Like I don't necessarily have a desire. Like I, I, I think a lot of battle rappers, especially in my phase, are like that. Like I don't have a desire if the opportunity's right, you know. So like I guess battles I think would be cool. Like Shoddy Horror would be a cool battle, but it's not like I'm like I'm, I need. I want that to happen. I need that to happen. Um, I know before. Uh, you know, the only battle I would say recently that I wanted to happen, which I didn't even want to happen, was the Mike P one. I didn't want it at first, and then we had, like, a little legit tiff. I say legit and tiff in the same shit. That's, like, the <laughs> pussiest thing ever. Like, we had a real cat fight. Like, but we had, like, you know, we exchanged some words or whatever. I'm like, all right, man, look, this, this is a battle I'm interested in. Now you pique my attention. But then time passed. He wasn't interested. I'm like, all right, man, cool one. And I, I have no interest for it going down the road. So 
people that I think would be cool battles. I always thought uh, Shotty would be a cool battle. Um, shit, now that I think about it, man, I'd have to. O Red, I always thought would be a a cool battle. Um, yeah, man, those two offhand, I guess. You know, usually people present me with a battle, and I'm like, oh, okay, that that is kind of dope. You know, because I battle a lot of people. A lot of people that I've wanted to battle for a while, I've already battled. You know what I mean? Yeah. Would you do more overseas stuff like you did in Scotland? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. I'd love, like I said, I would love to come out New Zealand. I would love to come out um, a lot of these places, man, just to just to authentically try to soak up the culture, have a good time, and you know what I mean, put on and educate myself. And you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'd love to, you know what I mean? That's what I mean. This has been a cool, eye-opening situation for me because i was not familiar with any of the talent over in new zealand and uh you guys definitely have some spitters man for sure for sure like and you all all it takes is a handful of you know legit ass people and then doors bust open man so yeah i, I that that's sadly that was like one of my favorite things about battle rap is traveling yeah and so that's you know although i've loved being in, being in this tournament like i'm obviously at home doing it um, but yeah, man, I'd, I'd love to get get moving again. Yeah, or well, maybe it'll happen at some point. I mean, maybe I don't know. Whenever your tenure was as champion is up, Cause yeah, that's you- what I'm over, man. <laughs> yeah, this is coming up on a year. August seventeenth or eighteenth will be a year. So I'm, I'm allowed to. So the some of the rules have changed and whatnot. I I know from the like I'm allowed to like I'm sure if I was like yo I'm I'm doing this battle in New Zealand like Gannick would be cool with it it would be cool. Obviously it's not really possible right now, but um it's just certain situations, certain circumstances, you know what I mean? I respect him tremendously more than just organic. Like that's my guy. I you know, I knew what I was getting into. This wasn't any kind of re this wasn't something that snuck up on me. Um, you know, they like they like to do, you know, have the champ exclusively. I mean, if you want to think about it in wrestling, yeah. Like yeah, the same Rock terminology. going over to WCW for the night yeah. with the title or something. It just, you know. So I, I think that there are some I don't like because I don't have that mindset fully, but I, I get it. You know, but we're, you know, we talk, we have discussions about it, so. Okay, yeah. Is there any additional perks you get, obviously, besides from the chain and the paycheck? Do you get any other free shit from them? Uh, <laughs> like I mean, you know, you, 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 you headline the cards, obviously, like you're a headliner, whether it be a day one or a day two. Um, and then, obviously, when you win, you you, you get paid more so. Um but I think really, man, that the, the chain thing has kind of the, been the coolest part of it. Money comes and goes, man. You know what yeah. I mean? I can't tell you how much money I've blown at bars or I've blown it wherever. I never thought about it again. Um, just to, like I said, I think that part was missing from my battle rap resume. So as, as long as for however many years I've battled, I've had – damn, I was on Scribble Jam. Like I battled everywhere. But one of the things that was missing is having something tangible. And for battle rap – that has so few tangible things, I was like, all right, man, that's cool. You know what I mean? So that's probably been the, the peak thing for me for it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so do you think – so if 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 you are able to come here, I mean, the, the, we don't actually have any cases within the community within New Zealand. It's Everything's returned to normal somewhat. Right. Um, so I think anyone who comes into the country, they just have to isolate for two weeks. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think because originally Chiller was meant to come. There was supposed, supposed to be an event here in March. Chiller was meant to mm. come. And then that didn't happen because that was right when lockdown happened. Um, but so if if at some point Organic was like, yep, sweet, you can go, you'd be keen. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. And I don't think he'd have a – I think his issue is more like, like I said, you know – I, you know, I, I don't know how it would look to go on. And, and again, it's, I think it Perception. would be something. Perception. Yeah. Thing. yeah. So I, I think, you know, going there would be fine. And I think he also wants to be respectful of battlers in the past who have had the chain with the same stipulations. So even though he feels that he's going to be changing some rules, like, okay, the, the champ can battle X, Y, Z here, whatever. Also, he don't want to completely shit on like former champs that, you know, 
you know, the head ice or whatever, who, you know, frankly had like a battle of his that they were like, yeah, no, nah, I would prefer you not to do this. And he honored it. I'm sure he would feel a way if all of a sudden I was champ and I got a million battles everywhere I wanted to He'd be like, Oh, what the hell kind of game we run in here? So, Did um, you- but yeah, I, I think definitely we're meeting somewhere in the middle about New Zealand. I can't see for a second would be a, an issue at all. Did you, um, so our most of you battle here is, uh, Diz because Diz came over. I'm not sure if you ever saw it. Yeah, I didn't Diz, see it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Diz, Diz came over, I think two years ago and he battled a guy scholar. Um, I mean, if you go watch that, bro, you just see the crowd going off, man. It's absolutely insane, man. And I, I heard a rumor. I don't know if it's true that, uh, cause Dila took care of Diz so well here in New Zealand that Diz was trying to use that as leverage to, um, uh, get treated better at some of his battles uh, overseas. He's like, oh, yo, New Zealand did this for me, so you need to do this for me. But I think that's that was funny. just, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's true or not. It's just something that I heard through the grapevine. So That's funny. I mean, to be fair, I, I don't know if he did that or not. And if he did, it's kind of bad business. But Diz always, I didn't see the battle, but Diz always does so well when he goes international. Like he's, he's so like good like and not only is he just good and whatever he's got eight hundred thousand battles in lebanese like you know what i'm saying like yeah, so yeah. i mean he's a very cultured you know what i mean i'm sure he if he went over he probably tried his damnedest and put on so um and that it's kind of harmless but it, it it's you know because you don't want people beating down the large door like yo what the hell are you trying to do here but then again you know this is always probably you know, and he knows this. He's probably undervalued himself on multiple occasions. So maybe it was a thing where Delar was like, look, man, let me take care of you, bro, because you, we appreciate you and you want to show him that appreciation. Some, some leagues and some places are not the same, man, you know? So, yeah, I mean, that's dope, though. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to really speak on Delar, but I, I think if you did come over, he'd, he'd take care of you pretty well. That's, I mean, oh, I don't know. I appreciate it. Like I said, man, and it's, you know, for me, it isn't, I'm not out. I'm looking for experiences and shit, man. I'm not out here trying to break the bank. Like I said, man, I have a, a job that I'm tenured in. I'm doing near top salary and I make money through music and other things, man. Like, you know, I'm not to say like, you know, let me just pay on my own dime or whatever, but you get the gist of it. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm not sure. out here trying to throw ridiculous numbers at people. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, hey, um, I might wrap up there, bro. This has been awesome, Jane. To you, bro. Um, yo, my man. Let me, let me before you go. Let me get the young boy. He's gonna put on some impressions for the yeah, for yeah. God. It's the first time for Battle Rap Media for 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 all our, our people in New Zealand, dog. Let him hear the uh, let him hear the Peter Griffin real quick. This is my son Trevor, by the way. He does impressions. Let me hear Peter Griffin real quick. Yeah, it's really nice to meet you. Uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, it sounded like you guys had a pretty good conversation going. What about Stewie Griffin? You can't accept him. No one cares about you. What about the SpongeBob laugh? Nah. What about uh, Optimus Prime? In the beginning of time, there was the cube. Holy <laughs> shit! What about, what about uh, let me let me try to think who else we missing? Walking Obama or not Obama? Trump. Trump. There's people in this world, not you, not you. <laughs> Maybe I don't know, but they think I'm fake news. I'm not, I'm not fake news. I'm, I'm just not. I'm what, huge. What about our Fozzie the Bear? <laughs> Why did the man put a sweater on his hot dog? <laughs> Why? Because it was a chilly dog. <laughs> ah, waka waka. Who else did we miss that? <sighs> Um, I don't think you guys have Bill Burr. You know Bill Burr? Oh, bro, I know Bill Burr. He's one of my favorite Burr. comedians. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just, just like who cares anymore? You know, do the Bill Burr bit about no reason to hit a woman. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a that's a classic. So I'm watching my girlfriend watch TV. It's something I like to do a lot. And the lady on the TV, she goes, "There's no reason to hit a woman. There's no reason." I'm like really? No reason. I could give you like 17 off the top of my head. 
You wake me up from a drunken stupor, I still give you a nine. What about Shaq? <laughs> you know Shaquille O'Neal? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 Shaq. Big Diesel. The guy style. Super Shaq. <laughs> Kenny Shaq. <laughs> Kenny Shaq. <laughs> Elmo, you got Elmo? Elmo. <laughs> Elmo's laughing at that dance. Elmo. Elmo and that. Far out. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah is, that is good, man. I hope you Thank you. I hope you're getting paid for that, man. Doing impressions or something. <laughs> I'm working on it. Oh, we're working good, on it, man. We're man. working on it, man. You'd probably be very good at voiceovers too. Voiceover. That's work. what we're trying to get. We're trying to get him in a little bit of both, man. The impressions, the voiceovers. We're trying to put like cohesive stuff together, man. So, you know what I mean. If you if you're on Twitter, he's the Trevor Weller Jr. Facebook, he's Trevor Weller voiceovers and. Voice work, is that it? I think so, yeah. And Instagram, it's the Trevor Weather. Yeah. Sweet. All right. I'll post that in the description of the podcast. And what's, uh, what's, all, your, what's all your stuff, bro? Where, where can everyone follow you? Uh, Real Deal PGH on Twitter, Real Deal PGH on Instagram. And um, what, is it Real Deal PGH? Look at me, bro. I think it's real it underscore. I think it's real underscore deal. Hold on. Botching this, bro. This dude. Botching this. Okay, here we go. Real underscore deal raps on Twitter. My bad. Real deal raps on Twitter. Um, Instagram is real deal PGH. Yeah. Right, Facebook, right. real deal. Trevor Weller. Pretty easy to find, man. And you have a website as well. Yep, realdealraps.com is the website. Definitely check in, man, because like I said, I'm, I'm doing these things for my father. I, w- I would love to, you know, uh, to hear people's support and whatnot. And uh, also, you know, I'm trying to, we're trying to work, and then, you know, I'm trying to work, man. So a lot of things, a lot of stuff to, to keep in motion, man. But I, we definitely, I appreciate you guys, man, for, you know, helping keep the blade sharp. And I think the final should be dropping soon. Yeah, it'll probably it'll probably drop by the time this is. Um, but hey, man, I think I just want to say on behalf of obviously the, in the entire battle rap scene in New Zealand, thanks for competing and lining them up, and thanks for doing this. I mean, I know you must be busy. I know things are crazy in America right now with COVID and everything. And um, yeah, so thanks for taking the time out. And y'all, shout shout out to your son, man. Like, <laughs> hey, man, we, we appreciate you, man. Hey, have a good one, man. Yep. All right. That's the show, everyone. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe. And until next time, stay safe.